this is for me. Uh, uh, Sully, Sully Sullivan uh, for Bomb Tech Golf. I, his claim is, hey, I make a amazing golf club that's just as good as the most expensive for a fraction of the price. So he says, he flat out says it, and he makes it like this, this promise to you, this first person thing. Put our clubs head to head with anything. So again, what's the common thread here is bold statement. I guarantee you will not find better performance and value combined. If you do, send them back. The brilliance of that is he's, um, many of these are including these risk reversal guarantees into their positioning. If it's not the best, send it back. So I know like I don't have to fear. Um, and same with uh, uh, well, Saddleback, 100 year guarantee, right? Those are risk reversals. And here's one I've got, um, date night made simple. This is a, a date box. I mean, it's simple. Date night made simple, and then they expand on it. Everything you need for a fun, romantic date night in, and then they're going to bust my objection of price, starting at eight bucks. Actually, you, we signed up for this. We've used it many months. It's cool. Um, if you are struggling with figuring out your positioning statement, I have three resources to recommend for you. Number one, uh, Philip Morgan's The Positioning Manual. If you worry about competition from cheaper developers, then buy this book, and it may rescue your business. So uh, this book is developer focused, but its advice on positioning is uh, applicable to any online business. Uh, I would, even if you don't buy it, just grab the four sample chapters from uh, through this lead magnet on his website, philipmorganconsulting.com. Um, it will walk you through step-by-step -step figuring out your positioning statement and just swap like development for e-commerce and it will make sense. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful resource, and I've used it myself. And once you've got that figured out, I, and I, you know, my last advice is, all right, once you have that positioning statement, now we want to extend it into the rest of our copywriting. Copywriting is really hard. I could not wrap my head around it, read a bunch of books, did not get it. And then I discovered Sean DeSouza's The Brain Audit, Why Clients Buy and Why They Don't. This book, sitting in a Starbucks for 40 minutes with this book, is the thing that made copywriting suddenly make sense to me, where it clicked and I was like, I get it now. But trying to do this without having a positioning statement would be near impossible. So once you've got that positioning statement figured out, if you're not feeling confident in your copywriting, absolutely check out Sean DeSosa's The Brain Audit. Wonderful book. And lastly, my last resources for you, uh, Joanna Wiebe, uh, Copy Hackers, has this guide called the ultimate guide to no pain. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. No pain copywriting. And in it, a lot of the, like they've got, um, they've got stuff for everything as you scroll through this. Uh, it's just great. Um, but some of those in here, like there are, depending on what you're, you're trying to do, they've got examples for headlines and sales letters and product descriptions. So I would, once you know, you, you understand your positioning statement and you've got a handle on copywriting, then I would start, you know, no one writes from scratch. I would start using these copywriting formulas to make your life easier. And that, with that, and I'll paste this resource in here. There you go. Um, and I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Kurt. Um, I missed the link to the very first one of the three resources that you, you were talking about. I'll grab it for you right now. I I'm going to get um, this, the brain audit because that sounds like something straight up my alley. While we're on the note of um, recommendations, actually, let's see if I can find it. Unconscious branding is a great one, uh, kind of on the neuroscience behind why people buy and why pe how people respond to words, colors, and how you trigger emotions within them. We already had uh, Ben Parr who wrote Captivology. He literally studied how to make articles go viral and kind of in a way invented a process for that at Mashable. He was the editor in chief that brought Mashable to its like prestige that it has today. Um, I feel like there's one more, let me see if I can find it. No, maybe. It'll come to me in a second, and we'll look for it later. But, I like uh, some of the, the classic stuff, like the, uh, those agency guys from like the Mad Men days. Um, There's some copywriting books that they wrote that are they're very good. These just sort of like Google, you know, classic, 
classic admin books, classic copywriting books. You'll find them. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah, my favorite marketing book is still my textbook from college. It was phenomenal. Yeah. The stuff is universal. Like this, these, these headline formulas and stuff are, many of them are a century old. Yeah. Yeah. It, people haven't really changed much in the last hundred years. So I think that, uh, <laughs> that it makes sense that we're using the same strategies once you figure it out and unlock that power of psychology. Look at who we have here up. All right. So Kurt, um, I've shared a few links to everyone about where they can find you. Again, um, if you haven't already, ch ch check out the doc. I see 31 people in this document with me. At the very bottom, we've got Kurt's unofficial Shopify podcast, his agency where you can book him for consultations and services, his boot camp, his YouTube channel, the Facebook group, and then these three resources that he recommends. Um, I appreciate so, it. Thank you. Sir. Kurt, I love having you on the show. You're always dropping knowledge bombs. So thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Great, great stuff. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, Jonathan Kennedy. Yeah. I know. He's brilliant. <laughs> and I, I shall go on my way. Thank you. Kurt, thank you. you're, you're between Jay and John. And <laughs> it's, it's so yeah. funny. I, I, I got a tough, tough people, act to follow here. I don't have the same office space as Kurt, but... Um, that's oh, that's just like 90 bucks worth of foam from Amazon. That's nothing special. <laughs> I might, maybe I'll get me one of those foam walls. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys. Take thank later, you. Kurt. All right, next up, we have John Kennedy from StoreTasker. He's going to tell us about building a community, and I highly recommend joining his Facebook community. I'll share a link to it in just a second. Just hit 100,000 community members. It's extremely uh, strong and vocal audience of, of Shopify store owners. And also, I'll plug John, John's business really quickly for, for you, John. Store Tasker is an amazing tool for getting things, especially off the ground with design and development work. The biggest risk you have if you have an idea for a business or Shopify store, um, like me personally, I don't have development talent at all. I can barely do any CSS myself. And John has spent um, his past how many years, John, in, in this space? Uh, yeah, like quite a few, I think nearly 15 years, but 10 years as an entrepreneur, yeah. Yeah, and he, nowadays he's vetting the talent for us. So he's vetting qualified Shopify only experts so that they're very familiar with the themes, the platform, the integrations, and the problems that exist in Shopify. And then you're able to bo 